probably one of the biggest mistakes I've made with my account and just entirely due to the fact that I wasn't aware of this at the time. I mean, I was leveling on my box, you know, all that kind of stuff. Trying to get the whole thing purple was leveling up this Elizabeth. If I could revert this Elizabeth back to a level 1 SSR and remove all of her working, oh my god, I would. And same goes for the Suicide Fraudron. This is an absolutely amazing unit, not only for cheesing top 100, but plenty of the Tariff Troll stages. She is absolutely amazing and she can clear half of it as long as you have other units in the team that can have their super powerful AoE ultimates. She is insane. And that is entirely due to this passive here. Removes all allies debuff, fully heals their HP, and fills ultimate move gauge orbs by two when the hero dies. And other than that, I mean, we're trying to get her CC as low as possible. So going over to the equipment, we have completely removed all of her gear. And then same for the closet. Haven't got anything equipped. We have the Holy Relic there because it doesn't really give her any extra stats. So why not? We'll have it. We'll have it equipped. It'll help out a little bit. The Holy Relic increases all allies HP related stats by 15%. Actually, would it be better if... HP related stats because that's not going to increase that's recovery rate and whatnot which if she dies turn one which is what we want when she's not going to have any of that proc anyways so life steals there but she's not going to be attacking but this is the team we're using today I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of these suicide teams using the alt gauge from going second the alt food and the ultimate from Merlin combined with the two when the Elizabeth dies you instantly get your ultimate you throw them off you win pretty much having some super OP unit Trader Melly what a perfect example for that with the 5-6 ultimate, there isn't much he can't do with it. The only reason I'm using the Meliodas over the Rimuru, don't get me wrong, I do have them both 5 at 6, is due to the buff removal. And I haven't used Meliodas in a hot minute, but if you guys don't know what the Meliodas does, his first card here inflicts amplified damage equal to 450% of attack on one enemy. His second card inflicts pierce damage equal to 250% of attack on all enemies. The ultimate removes buffs and stances from all enemies, then decreases all stats by 25% for two turns. Inflicts cleave damage, which does not result in a critical strike, then equal to 454% or of attacks. So very strong ultimate. He's passive here. Every time ally uses a single target attack skill, all of the hero stats are increased by 6% for three turns, stacking up to five times. If two or more single target attack skills are used in a single turn, allies damage taken from enemy decreases by 8%, stacking up to 40 his whole kit is just absolutely insane. Jumping over to the gear, we are rocking the attack crit set. I still need to do the defense pieces on so many of my characters. And then going over to the cosmetics, he is completely maxed out. Apparently we're having a Holy War Fest in the next two weeks and I don't have any cosmetic upgrade materials, so I'm gonna have to save up on those, but this is the team we're using today, and let's jump right into it. And probably the only downfall of this team is that if you are versing a real player, there is a pretty high chance if they have single target cards in their hand, they are not going to go for your Elizabeth, so potentially having a, and we have had leaks of this, some of the older versions of the DA, and there's one of them that has a taunt turn one. If we were to have that character have a Holy Relic and maybe be just a little bit more viable, you wouldn't have this character, you know, attacking your other units. As you can see here, we face a bot. We get that one right out the gates. Always having melee on the far left, that way we get his ultimate, and it's as simple as that. There's not really much he can do from this point. The melee will get the stat decrease. I believe the DM will also get the stat decrease, yeah. And it's as simple as that. There's honestly not a lot to talk about. It, it's a scummy team, don't get me wrong, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do. We have the DN ultimate as well. Unfortunately, my DN's only 2-6, so she's not going to be putting in a crazy amount of work throughout today's video. And when playing top 100, 80 to 90% of your matches are going to be bots anyways, so once again, not the most prideful way of winning these matches, but hey, it's it's good fun to do from time to time. It was pretty much all we saw when the 4v4 was out, and for good reason, this kind of team in 4v4 is ridiculous. Being able to have that other unit in the front is goddamn broken. With the Elizabeth getting the extra card there, we'll actually get the melee and the Deanne ult, which will be really good. Can't remove it because he hasn't got enough ult gauge, but... We have actually got the patch notes for the next update with the Summer Dian. Super excited to have a drop. Super excited to have a character that can give us guaranteed turns or like guaranteed three turns on the Founder Demon raid. It's It can be a little bit of a struggle sometimes. I've heard that if one person has a Dian and another doesn't, it is a little bit clunky. Probably just due to the fact that people are still getting used to the team, but very excited to have that. It's probably a skip for most people considering we can all do the raids so easily at this point and I'm Pretty sure almost everyone summoned on the brand new Sun God Freya and he's the best DPS unit for the new raid as well. So you'll 
it'll be fine if you don't summon Feather Dian. She does have the same cosmetics as the Ragnarok Dian, which is very good. Once again, saves pretty much everyone having to buy new cosmetics. I do like the fact that they give us these new characters, but if you were to just simply buff old characters, we wouldn't need to be buying all these cosmetics time and time again. It's one of the main things this game is missing. Once 80, 90% of the box is useless, and they release these characters that are good for an activity, but when the activity stops becoming the hardest activity, or when it goes away, the character's kind of just left there to do nothing. And I understand, just like how Fate has CEs, which you only use for the event, and then once the event's gone, there is always a rerun, but it kind of loses its value. Gacha Game's gonna do that to get your money, but some stat buffs, some sub stat buffs is all they really need, just to make the characters viable, at least in PvP. They don't have to be good everywhere, just, just able to withstand some of these other characters. Also surprised to see us getting another Dian so soon, and a summer Dian at that a swimsuit one. All the Dian simps are always eating good in this game. It's even the King Dian simps, the people that I believe in the new cutscene, there's a whole bunch of stuff between them as well. It's crazy how much Netmarble loves Dian. It's we get so many characters. Although in saying that, I do believe she was the last in to get a festival. So there was a brief period there where you know, Netmarble weren't giving her as much. She's not one of my favourite sins. I still believe Barn's the best sin. Not killing the Elizabeth right off the bat. This is where things get a little bit tricky. We can attack into the Sariel. I feel like we're going to be fun, especially if we use the AoE afterwards. The life still kicks in after the counter, so... Sariel's definitely going to hurt us with that one, but... Oh, has the evasion fruit anyway. That's good. Take that hit there, and then the PS card can life seal us back to full HP. Hoping he has some extra cards there. I'm surprised that he didn't use any of his king cards. Hmm, but if the once again, if the Elizabeth was level 1, she easily would have died to that first attack. We are losing a lot of damage as well due to all of the debuffs from the Sariel Grace. Or the Sariel Passive, I should say. Hmm, that's the only thing where King's Ultimate is a little bit better than Melee's is he does have the debuff removal upon use. That's at all levels as well. Absolutely hate it when Netmarble will give these super OP characters extra effects on their ultimate at later levels because everyone knows they're going to summon for those extra multipliers, all that kind of stuff. Once again, just another way that these developers are good at getting our money, that's for sure. I just had a friend spend near a thousand dollars on a new character on Fate. Absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I've spent close to I think the most amount of money I've ever spent on a character was $700 trying to get the Namek Goku for 350 million downloads on Global. I haven't had to spend that much money on the 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross because it's a better gacha game and it actually has a pity system. Thank God for that. Yeah, I've definitely spent close to that amount of money. Going three rotations on Freya was not the greatest thing in the world, and to only get in 5-6 is actually heartbreaking. This is going on 30% of the death effect, which is wild. And what kind of team is this with a... Oh, quite a bit of CC though, that's for sure. Is this... Mans might be rocking the HP defense Tarmiel, because this Tarmiel has... Probably not nowadays, but insanely high stats, and that is entirely due to the fact that you are going to be building him a full triple defense set, so giving him those stats kind of counteracts that awful CC otherwise. Definitely a real player though, so it's going to be going for our Meliodas. If we could not get finished off with this single target card... Hmm... I mean... We could definitely go for the double AoE in hopes that we lifesteal enough back. There's no way he has evasion food or anything like that, so we don't have to worry about that. I think that's going to be our best play here. Don't have a crazy amount of buffs, so his damage isn't going to be super through the roof. The place are going to be enough to get the job done. We can remove those buffs from Melee. Get the extra- Oh, look at that. Is he going to go straight back to full HP? Surely not, right? Okay, he does have- He does have the block effect on him now, so we are going to lose tons of- Hmm. Okay, I still feel like the ultimate's worth throwing out, though. Yeah, missing out on the Pierce effect as well. That Margaret- uh, I believe it's the, the Grace of Margaret that throws out the block effect. So, so powerful. I've actually been enjoying Margaret a whole lot more as of recent. It's, I mean, yeah, we do have the Archangel team to kind of support that fact, but, uh, remove you and then we'll kind of just throw these out. Although the Meliodas has the block effect on him, throwing out the single target card will still get the second part of his passive up, which is the demo destruction. Although Elizabeth's still in the field and we kind of want her to be gone, oh, I should have gone for an AoE. Surely you just still kill here, right? Is he rocking? He's rocking the red tarmel grace on Rick, you bastard. 
Oh, how I wish to have a 6-6 Tarmiel. Really hoping they give us the SSR selection event back sometime soon. I can... I mean, maybe for... Is it two and a half year for Global where we're getting the... Esterosa Festival, I think, is what everyone's saying at least. Because that would be sick if that would put Tarmiel... Even just to put Tarmiel on that banner, I don't necessarily need the SSR selection. However, I am going to be saving SSR tickets from now on. Just for that case. Hmm. Smart killing the Elizabeth first. Damn, only one ult gauge away from Emily Ultimate. However, now that he doesn't have the block effect on him, I feel like we can just start cleaning everyone up here. Don't really have to worry about the Rimuru either. Yeah, we should easily kill Tommy. I don't know what he thought putting up the Grace with that much health. Actually beating people with way higher CC. Not only because we're using this kind of team, but... Oh, wow, he actually... Oh, no. The... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, not only having way higher CC than us cost we're using this kind of team, but even in general, I am not hitting that 700, uh, 370,000 mark. It is mainly due to the constellations that ends up getting you. If you have 12 million box CC, just using any regular team, you have such a big advantage. It's absolutely wild, but let's see. I don't think there's much you can do at this point. This is a, this is another win for us. Boy's definitely thinking about it though. I'm sorry I had to beat you with such a scummy team. Oh no, but the, the Rimuru will prevail, although Trader Melee is good, Rimuru is easily the second best unit in the game. With our melee dead, I don't think our DN can actually put up enough damage to to kill everyone here. She's definitely going to tank the attack. Oh no, he's getting rid of Merlin instead. Yeah, that stops us from putting up the taunt, which will make us lose a lot of the damage. We got super close, that's for sure. If we had had to taunt just a little bit earlier, hey, we probably could have got that one. And there are plenty of different versions of this team you can use. Actually getting the out CC. <laughs> uh, I think this one's a I think this one's an easy win. We'll go one and we'll oh, I actually think I might hold on to the PS card. We'll go for that instead. That way we can break the King's Shield when he inevitably throws that one out. But you can easily replace the Elizabeth for Fraudin and that gives you the, on his death for ultimate gauge, so saves you using the alt food and the Merlin in the back. You can maybe use a unit that supports your team, such as Ragnarok Bon, all that other kind of stuff. You can get a little bit creative with it. You can chuck in Amelia. Her with the secret technique ultimate is a very, very strong pick as well. It's still, it's a fun team, that's for sure. Not using any of the king cards, so that means he is dead right out the gates. Yeah, main reason why this is so strong in 4v4 is because Pretty much everyone's going to be using those full AOE teams. <laughs> this is this is bullying at this point. But there we go, Thajabat does it for today's video. If you guys have any team suggestions, especially with the new Summer DN coming out, I feel like we are in a super, super dry spot in Grand Cross at the moment. I would make Skull and Hardy videos. I am just not the biggest fan of that kind of content. I have beaten the first floor. I could definitely beat the second floor. I just, I don't have the time to do that kind of thing. I'm once again, not the biggest fan of it. It's cool and all, and I'm gonna have to do it because it's going to be how we get the Holy Relics for the demons. So that means characters like the Salt Mode Meliodas and the even characters like Mon Speed as well, super, super fun. Some of the Derrieres as well. So I'm probably going to have to get more onto that, but that's about does it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe. It really means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.